All right, I think we're going to go ahead and start. So we have here tonight, um, very exciting to have Rhonda Holman here. She is also known as the Airway Champion. She's a 23-year-old dental assistant. She's been dental assistant for 23 years. Let me just rephrase that. And she runs the airway protocol for her airway focus dental practice in Montana. She has a passion for all things of airway health um, and the experience to back it up with a recover for, as a recovering mouth breather herself. She was at the ADA convention in 2017 when they announced their policy uh, for airway health as screening in pediatric population and that Rhonda was actually present for on that same day. Since that day, she has not stopped learning to connect the signs to the symptoms. <clears throat> the budding field of airway health medicine is growing at a rapid rate of sharing the why behind the consequences of mouth breathing. However, very few are focusing on the how to recover part of this epidemic. Treating the consequences of mouth breathing and achieving functional breathing is a long road. However, with the right tools, the education, Rhonda is helping others to get there one night at a time. So we are here to introduce Rhonda, and I'm so excited, Rhonda, because I've met her on TikTok, and we've chatted so many times, and we share videos, and we corroborate on this whole, uh, you know, focus-driven airway and, you know, intention. So Rhonda, welcome. <laughs> so Thank you, you, Dr. Galan, for having me. I appreciate the, the platform. I mean, anytime I can spread awareness, um, even, you know, even if it's just one person, I know I'm supposed to be satisfied. If I, if I reach one person and say, Hey, mouth breathing is making you sick. Yeah. Look what it did to your face. I, I'd still want to reach more. <laughs> Absolutely. And we're all, we're all in the same, we're all in the same boat. And I just love your passion. I love your videos. You're amazing. You TikTok. you do fantastic videos. It's hard to miss. I mean, you've gathered what a hundred thousand followers. That's quite, that's quite the number. There's yeah, a lot of videos there's, there I haven't seen, but yes. There's a lot of interest. Um, you know, mouth breathing really is an epidemic. Um, and it's it's so underdiagnosed. And all we do in Western allopathic medicine is kind of like put band-aids on bullet wounds. We're constantly chasing symptoms and medicating from there on, but never peeling back the layers of the onion to say, hey, what does function actually look like? Like, how is your human body working? How are you operating it? And how could that possibly impact these other symptoms and signs that you've had over the years that progressively get worse and turn into something bigger? Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, <clears throat> so tell me, what would, what are you, what are you covering today? I know that you have a few points you wanted to, you know, really touch on tonight. So go right ahead for all. Absolutely. Of so, um, you know, as a dental assistant, I'm not a doctor and the things that I wanted to learn when I started my airway journey, which it really is a journey because these are neuromuscular patterns you have got to change that you've had practically your whole life in a lot of cases. Yeah. But the thing that, you know, like the, the people in my circle who are hyper-focused on this subject tend to um, focus on how it happened. They focused on how to prevent it. Um, and they focus on awareness, but not a lot of them are focusing on what to do when you realize what mouth breathing has done to you as an adult. Right. And I really, I feel like that's a huge void. And I had to dig, I had to dig for the answers. I had to dig for the solutions, implement them, what works, what didn't work, share what works, share, you know, share as much research as I can find on the things that do work and why they're connected. And I just, I want to be, I want to fill that void. I want to be a recovering mouth breather who says, Hey, I was doing it wrong too. Here's how I fixed myself. <laughs> and give real world solutions. There are oral growth appliances that can create room for your tongue. There are ENTs that will do a UPP, which would, you know, remove all the soft tissue in the back of the, the, the oral pharynx. There are, you know, all kinds of, you know, sleep physicians that will prescribe you a CPAP, APAP, BiPAP. There are dentists that will apply, you know, the, the, the theory of pulling your mandible forward, which pulls your tongue forward with a mandibular sleep appliance. And all of these things are great modalities, 
but they're still not treating the dysfunction, which is inevitably what led to whatever symptom you're chasing. Right. And, and a lot of that is, you know, it's kind of layered. <clears throat> so let's say you're a 35 year old male with a retronathic mandible, a deviated septum, crowded crooked teeth with a high vaulted palate and an elongated soft palate. And every night you go to sleep, you struggle to breathe, right? Yep. And you don't have the money to go see that specialist. You know, you can't go to the ENT right now. You don't have medical coverage. Um, you, you want that sleep appliance. You know, you need the sleep appliance, but your insurance doesn't want to cover it. Um, you're on a waiting list to go to the sleep physician to get the CPAP or, you know, there's always some type of roadblock for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to empower people with knowledge and with solutions so that they know they can help themselves when they don't have access to care. Right. You know, there's, there's no one size fits all. And, and, and that's, you know, I mean, you look at the statistics, like how many people actually are undiagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea alone, it's you know, terrible. it's, it's very yeah, heard... yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. They just figured, you know, I have shitty sleep and that just is what it is. And every year it gets worse. And that's just my new normal. Cause I'm getting old. Yeah. Um, but that's not the way it's supposed to be. Like we're supposed to prioritize our health span mm -hmm. and dysfunction that's chronic, like mouth breathing yeah. is only going to prevent you from living a life that is healthy, that you can be active, that you don't wake up tired, that you don't have all of these, you know, aches and pains everywhere and headaches. And you can't understand why your gut health is all jacked up. And, and I just, I don't want to be part of the cycle where we live in the last 30 years of our life are in disease management <laughs> and we're okay with that. I'm not okay with that. I am not okay with the idea of thinking the last 30, 30 years of my life, I'm going to be dealing with some chronic problem. Yeah. I'm going to have high blood pressure. I'm going to have diabetes type two. Uh, I'm going to have fibromyalgia. Like I don't, I don't, I'm not settling for that. There's gotta be a root cause. And I exactly. believe that dysfunctional breathing is one of the main root causes to a lot of the comorbidities. If you think about it, the three priorities for human life, right? Mm -hmm. Oxygen, <laughs> water, food in that order, literally in, in that, that order. order. Yes. But the, the number one thing that's making us sick is often overlooked. Absolutely. It, no one says, Hey, how you breathe actually matters. Turns out. Right. <laughs> Right. And how long have you been um, on the um, airway completely since 2007 or when exactly did you start? So I was 37. Yeah. 2007. No, 2017. 17. Yeah. I was 37. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I wish I was that young still I actually feel, you know, it's funny if you ask almost any recovering mouth breather, who's really committed to like fixing this dysfunction and, and counteracting some of the damage that they've already uh, has occurred. Yeah. They tell you that they feel better in their thirties, forties, and fifties than they did in their twenties. Yeah. That it's makes fascinating. It's it is fascinating. It is very fascinating. And we're very um, passionate about that over here too. We've been trying to integrate things into the office. I mean, you and I have chatted a few times, so we're definitely trying our best to get pe people to become more aware. We're trying new webinars. We're trying to just, just kind of get it out in the open and make sure that everybody's aware of what's going on. Yeah, you're right. A lot of people, knowledge. Yeah, exactly. It's Ooh, not common it's, knowledge. <laughs> yeah, it is common knowledge. And it's also open-mindedness because there's a lot of people out there too that are, you know, they just kind of block you. Oh yeah, I'm okay. Oh, I'm sleeping okay. I'm breathing okay. You know, so it's really hard to get through that first phase of, you know, let me, maybe not so much. Can I just show you something a little different? You know, that kind of thing, right? Yeah. The difference between common and normal. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, and we were talking about TikTok and I love that medium. Like I have really felt at home there because not only do I use that app to learn, I mean, I'm apparently I've fallen on health TikTok yeah. and every video I have is like some type of herbal remedy, some type of yoga pose, some type of like you know, energy worker, meditation, like it's, I love my side of TikTok. I mean, some other people 
Carrie, we talked about that today. She's like, I don't know what side of TikTok I ended up on, but mine are all like people in bikinis dancing. I'm like, oh, you should come to my side because because it's not just teenagers using the app. Like it's people that are older and that struggle to breathe while they sleep. And yes, you know, all it takes is one video to spark. Hey, hmm, maybe she's onto something. Maybe I'm like her in a way. Like, yeah. let me just, I, you know, just maybe start thinking about. I wonder why I hit the snooze button three times every morning and I wake up with bags under my eyes and I'm, I'm always thirsty in the middle of the night and I get up to pee all the time and I'm restless. And I can't remember the last time I had a dream, you know, like oh there's so gosh. many people, they're like my so face hurts from all the clinching and the grinding. And I can't remember what I had for dinner last night because my short-term memory is shot. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's amazing how this all um, affects so what we're, you know, for those that are just starting, where do you feel like it would be a good start for them? Like other than keep their mouth closed. <laughs> right. I know. Yeah. Let's, we could wrap this up and just like, Hey, breathe through your nose. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. I wish it was that easy, but it's, it's really not. Honestly, the, the first step for me, cause I really, I was one of those. I don't have a problem. My sleep is fine. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know what good sleep was supposed to look like. And, 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 you know, no one's fault, but my own, I, I never, I never thought about sleep cycling. I never thought about like how much time you should spend in REM or deep sleep or how grinding my teeth at night wasn't normal. Um, but the minute you, you start to think, okay, let's see if there's something to this. Can I breathe through my nose, you know, with my lips closed during the day for five minutes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I have nasal patency. Can mm. I not breathe through my nose for five minutes during the day? Hmm. Maybe that's cause for concern. I should probably call my ENT. Right. You know, is there an, you know, rule it out. Is there an anatomical issue preventing me from breathing through my nose? And here's the thing, <laughs> people, human beings, human beings, me mm -hmm. included, mm -hmm. we are experts at excuses. Oh, oh. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Oh man. Oh, I slept, I, was, I, I slept bad last night. Um, uh, because there was a cat moving around, um, by the way, light sleep shouldn't be the only stage of sleep you end up in to where you hear the cat all night yes. um, or, you know, like, Oh, I, I had indigestion and I had heartburn. It has nothing to do with like me struggling to breathe at night and the stomach juice is coming back up and eroding my teeth. Yeah. We are so good at excusing away things when <clears throat> I put one tiny piece of 3m micropore paper tape on my lips one night okay yeah and i was like mm. and it stayed on like half the night yeah I was like well okay i'm not gonna give up because somebody yeah. somewhere i'm gonna like a course i've taken said that this this is gonna help me so like a week later goes by and i've taped every night like night three the tape stayed on a night and i had chronic hip pain so i fell off a pontoon <laughs> like oh my a pontoon God. yeah like i fell off it and I had like hip pain on my left hip. It wasn't like debilitating or anything. Like it just kind of sore. Yeah. And after a week of lip taping, the hip pain was gone. I mean, it had been there six months and I'm like, this can't be a coincidence. Wow. And then I thought, you know what? My face doesn't hurt as much as it used to. Like I haven't been grinding my teeth. Oh, that's weird. And then the dream started coming back. I'm like, oh my gosh, I had a dream that I remembered last night what is this tape? It's magic. <laughs> was I still snoring? Yes. I was snoring so loud, like through my nose, like, which I didn't know that was even a thing. Yeah. I thought for sure, if you put tape on your lips, you're done snoring. I mean, there's no way it would ever happen. Mm -mm. So there's two types of snoring. <laughs> there's mouth snoring and there's no snoring mm -hmm. and both are caused from over breathing. So when you have a low tolerance to CO2, Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's really hard for you to slow down your breathing, to be slow and silent through the nose at rest. Right. And with all of those forces, if you're sucking that much air in, just do an experiment with yourself, right? <clears throat> if I was just sitting here calmly breathing through my nose, could I snore? I couldn't do it. No. What do I have to do to make that sound? <sighs> right. I some air in. <laughs> which is over breathing. So I have a lot of people that tell me, uh, I don't mouth breathe. I'm like, I know, but you still could fit into this category. Yeah. Like you could still be an over breather and that's yeah. just enough to ruin your sleep. <laughs> right. There's so many spectrums of us and, and you look at all the science and people are talking about 
you know, sleep disordered breathing, it, it has like a, a very statistically speaking, a, a good timeline of progression. <laughs> you know, you go from maybe snoring as a baby. And then as you're, you know, in your early adulthood, um, maybe you don't snore anymore. You know, your sleep still sucks, but you don't snore anymore. Right. And then you gain a little weight and you get a little older and things get floppier. And then mm -hmm. you start snoring again. And yeah. then one day you stop breathing at night. <clears throat> you just literally stop breathing for 10 seconds or more. And you start gasping or coughing. You wake up <coughs> and then you roll over and you go back to sleep. Right. And then a couple seconds, couple minutes later, you repeat like, there is, that's not restorative reparative sleep. No. And it really like, it doesn't have to be this way. We don't have to progressively get worse. We can take back our health. We just got to know where to look. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, so you start with your mouth, with your lip taping. And then, um, and then a lot of that is the myofunctional therapy too, right? Like in order oh. to keep all that airway going through your nose at all times, your tongue can't fall backwards. Right. So yeah, it's so a, there's your it's soft a tissue. Tube it's a two for deal. Like if, if anybody says, Hey, I'm going to start taping my lips. It's going to fix my life. You're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> It'll get you started, but you're wrong. It won't fix your life. It won't fix your sleep, but it will get you that much closer. Like I, I even know a doctor, right? He says that he won't even converse with a patient about their specific condition until they've taped their lips for two weeks. Hmm. He knows that the detrimental effects it has on short-term memory and um, cognitive function and performance and, and, and understanding complex information mm -hmm. is actually, you'll benefit from it. If okay, you tape for two weeks yeah. and then we talk about your, your situation. Cause at that point people are engaged, you know, right. kind of like me, it only took a week for chronic pain to go away. I'm like, Hmm. Okay. okay. So that's when we say, here's the deal. We changed the pathway. Right. And now that you're using your nose more, I, guarantee you have less boogers. Yeah. <laughs> I, I guarantee, you know, it's, it's, it's easier. You, even with a deviated septum, like I have a significantly deviated septum and I can still breathe through my nose. And the yeah. more you use it, the better it works. Right. And at that point you say, okay, so we changed the pathway. Now, mm -hmm. how do we make the hole bigger? <laughs> right. And at the same time, how do we slow down your breathing? So you can't suck what you do have in. <laughs> right. So that's, I honestly, like if, if you put a piece of tape on your lips, I want you to commit to getting your tongue and lips stronger <laughs> and slowing down the breath. Cause they, it's a marriage. Like you have to have both. Cause let's say I work on getting my tongue stronger and that's going to be great for holding up my soft palate and creating like a good splint for my airway. So I can get the most air through my nose at night, but I'm still over breathing. Right. So if you slow down the breathing, it, it's like this beautiful harmony between function and form <laughs> mm -hmm. it sounds like it is so um for example can you walk us through like maybe like an exercise in the breathing like how to engage the diaphragm a little bit more oh absolutely i'd love to i haven't taken okay. any we take a breathing classes but i would love to see what you know what it is all about yeah okay so um when you're a mouth breather right you're you're over breathing so you're breathing pretty rapid and a lot of us when we're taking air in through this hole we're using our upper chest to breathe with mm -hmm. and that's you know a lot of us have like neck pain and back pain and, and all these fascial restrictions and adhesions but when i'm breathing up here i'm not engaging the lower i mean look at the body look at anatomy <laughs> picture right you can see the lower part of the lungs are bigger yeah, <laughs> they have all the bronchi i mean they have more bronchi the blood supply is thicker down there you yeah. want to get the air down into your diaphragm, into your belly. And so the best way to do that, honestly, is to lay on your back on the floor. Oh. Grab, grab like a flip flop or a, uh, uh, I don't know what are those things called the Crocs, <laughs> you know, something oh, like, yeah. you know, oh, you yeah. don't want like to like something with a little bit of a... anything in your stomach. <laughs> but or just maybe like nice. a roll pillow, like maybe like a towel, like if you roll a towel, yeah, just that. something that won't roll off your stomach. You know, if it's flat, it's better. Find yourself a mirror, you know, like a floor length mirror, if you want it and lay on the floor and just move your belly up with the inhale. And as you exhale all again through the nose, <laughs> I'm not a big, some people are mouth breather fans. Like as far as breath work goes, I really think it's, it's playing with fire. If you're trying to reset your function, like say you're a recovering mouth breather and you're trying to go to don't dabble, just sorry, PSA don't dabble in breath work that makes you breathe through your mouth. Oh, 
is you're just confusing your poor little brain. Okay. <laughs> like that's I'm enough. trying to reset these neural pathways, right? To say, this is the new hole. This is not the hole. <laughs> and, and when you do breath work that it, like Wim Hof method, it's great. It has you know, lots of science backing it up. I just don't think it has a place for the early recovery mouth breather until you've reestablished proper function. Proper function. Uh, okay. but, so you're laying on your back. You got a shoe on your belly. When you inhale, your belly goes up. Mm -hmm. And when you exhale, your belly comes down. Mm -hmm. Now the key, okay. The key is you want your exhale through your nose to be longer than the inhale through your nose. Okay. Why, Why do we want to do that? Right. We want to extend the exhale through the nose because that is when nasal nitric oxide is produced. Like you can get nitric oxide from certain foods and chemicals and substitutes or whatever, but we, we have a factory right here. Yeah, <laughs> we do. And, and, in case you, you know, you guys know what nasal nitric oxide, if you don't, it's, it's a vasodilator. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So your whole body loves it, especially your heart. <laughs> and our heart gets hit pretty it. hard every night that we struggle to breathe. Yeah. So you really want to extend that exhale as much as you can. And this, here's another one, humming. Humming is so magical and easy to do, and it does everything we want. Plus, so humming not only extends the exhale, right? So it yeah. makes the air come out slower and takes longer, Yeah. but you're also creating vibration. That's going to stimulate the vagus nerve, which is like rest and digest. <laughs> Everybody lives in chronic anxiety when we've overbreathed our whole lives. You know, we've, we've been stuck in fight or flight and it's so hard to switch from parasympathetic and sympathetic because we've been, you know, dysfunctional. It is it's, all of we, us we haven't been using our body, right? <clears throat> no, we haven't. Mm -hmm. And, and to get any kind of stimulation to your vagus nerve, I mean, there's all kinds of tricks. You can just literally rub from behind your ear down to the collarbone mm -hmm. <laughs> that stimulates your vagus nerve. Like okay, these things that's... Are magical. hopefully everybody watching this has two of these. Yes. Even one will work. Yes. You know? yes. Absolutely. <laughs> you have these beautiful knuckles yeah. and they can help release some of the, um, lymphatic, uh, buildup that a lot of us have, mm -hmm. like when you have weak tongue, when you have a weak tongue, mm -hmm. you recruit a lot of the accessory facial muscles, which gives you that forward head posture, this hyperactive mentalis, like these jowls, <laughs> you know, we got, I had a, I'm on the dog word tomp or kyphosis, which is yeah. like the typical term, no, but yeah. it was bad. And really? most of us have neck pain and hump in our back and, yeah. and all of these things can be fixed with time and knowing what to do and knowing what to do. It's amazing. It's amazing how everything's so interrelated and it's so simple yet, you know, and especially with this COVID time, I mean, my gosh, COVID time has been, it's, it's just reversed everything, everything and anything that we've ever known about our bodies and what to do right or wrong. But it just, I mean, it's just really flipped everything around on yeah. everybody. And, and that's, that's when I really kicked into high gear. Like I see so many people on TikTok that'll tell me I wasn't mouth breathing until I started wearing a mask every day. Yep. yep. <laughs> it was just true. enough airflow resistance for me to switch to the other hole because I didn't feel like I was getting enough air. Right. And then like for me and a few of the people on TikTok, they're telling me, you know, hey, it was a wake up call. Like I could either be a sitting duck or I could figure out why I didn't feel good in the first place so that <laughs> if I didn't get sick, I'd be ready. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, it's fascinating because that's how it was for me. Like I, I dived head first. I'm like, okay, what can I do? Like I went and I bought every book I could get my hands on. Wow. <laughs> like, how, how do I get healthy? Like yeah. they don't teach you this stuff in school. Like they, they teach you like the food pyramid and um, safe sex and they teach you how to drive. <laughs> they they teach you, you know, if you're lucky enough and you get a home and home economics class, you might be able to sew, sew like a sweater and yeah. make a meringue, <laughs> but no one tells you how to work the thing that we live in. Right. That's so true. Yeah. Biology is the number one place to learn all that stuff, but, but you're right. They don't teach you how to do that at all. That's very interesting. You're so right. Like, about that. I would have loved as a, you know, a teenager, somebody said, Hey, uh, this one's for breathing. This one's for eating. Um, don't stick anything bigger than your elbow in your ear. Uh, you know, like I would have, you know, 
watch out what you put near, you know, your genitals, like yeah. certain soaps and dyes can be really bad for you or, Hey, yeah. don't pluck all your eyebrows out, Rhonda. They may not grow back <laughs> <laughs> just because skinny eyebrows are in. Uh, you have to understand where hair growth comes from and it's a follicle and you take it away and it may not come back. <laughs> it may not come back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How funny. So, um, so what, um, so with regards to the breathing, um, you know, again, this buteco breathing is quite um, exciting, I feel. It's a very exciting field, and I'm, you know, very much looking forward to implementing more of that here at the office. We have some patients that are in the process of airway, um, uh, you know, correction and, you know, expansion and everything. They're doing fantastic. Um, and then as a complement to all of that, we're um, going to start putting them on all of that. Um, airway and uh, monofunctional therapy. What um, advice do you have for them at home? Something easy for them to practice other than, you know, obviously more of the massage, you know, they stimulate the vagus, um, the mouth breathing with the tape. I know some of them, you know, need to start doing a little bit of that. Um, how many hours a day and or night maybe? Um, is it, bare, is there a bare minimum or do you feel like it's <clears throat> you know well, when it when it comes to the lip tape and it's, it's trial and error I mean you're going to find a brand that doesn't work you're going to find a brand that um, irritates the skin around your lips you're going to get ticked off because part of oral facial myofunctional therapy is making the lips stronger right mm -hmm. if the lips are stronger that's easier for them to stay shut right but if you're a recovering mouth breather you've lost a lot of tone in the abicularis the little sphincter muscle that goes around the lips yeah. With that being said, plus the habit, right? You breathe through your mouth all night, every night. Like no one told you any different. And here you are changing stuff up. And there's a chance that there's just so much resistance trying to find the right tape, seeing if it'll stay on all night, uh, making sure your skin doesn't have a reaction to it. There, I don't know that there's a time frame. All I would say is don't give up. Mm -hmm. Keep learning. Okay. So the, be the best way to do this. So in Buteco breathing, there's a method called the control pause. So remember, if you are breathing through the big hole, you're using up here and it's not as good for your body, right? Because you're missing all of this uh, delicious oxygen, like as far as like offloading the CO2 and onboarding the O2. The thing is control pause is what's going to help you de like develop your CO2 tolerance. So mm. the number one complaint I hear when somebody says, I can't switch to nose breathing. I don't get enough air through there. Like, I feel like I'm suffocating. I'm like, yeah, you're right. You do. You probably do. And here's why you have a low tolerance to carbon dioxide. And what that does is CO2 is the signal for your body to take the next breath. So if you are, if you have a really low car tolerance to CO2, of course, you're going to overbreathe because you, the goal of Buteco breathing is to do less with more. And that is understanding that it's not about the quantity of breaths. It's the quality. Right. Again, making that exhale longer to produce more nasal nitric oxide and the control pause. It's really simple. You just do it before you get out of bed, before you talk, before you eat food, hmm. you take your phone out. Mm -hmm. and this is when you're awake. I don't suggest you have your phone when you go to bed, but when you wake up, it's okay. Yeah. You take your phone out, you turn the timer on, right? Mm -hmm. You inhale through the nose, you exhale through the nose. Hit start, pitch that nose. You wanna see what your tolerance to CO2 is. Hmm. You will be able to hit stop um, as soon as you get like the first desire to breathe, like the first air hunger. A lot of times, you know, um, when you're switching from this hole to these holes, um, you won't be able to hold your breath very long. You'll have a really low tolerance, like four or five seconds. Um, and, and gradually, you know, as you start to, to breathe less at night and you start focusing in on like your nose breathing during the day, you're sighing less, right? You're not like yeah. offloading too much CO2. You're, you're producing more nasal nit nitric oxide. This bad boy starts working better. And then maybe next week you try it again. So inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose before the end of the breath, pinch your nose and hold it. Time yourself, yeah. see how long you can tolerate that CO2. And before you get the first distinct, um, desire to breathe, like if, if you, okay, let's say, watch this. If I hold it so long that I'm like, 
Yeah. You overdid it. You you overshot the landing. <laughs> that is defeating the purpose. It isn't, right. it's not a contest and it, it, you can't beat the system. It's something that happens gradually, like over time, the slower your breath gets, the easier it is to be tolerant to CO2. So that <laughs> that's huge because when I first started my, my control pause was 12 seconds. Hmm. And that, I mean, now I'm up to 40 <laughs> and I don't snore wow. anymore. So, I mean, it's all I'm going to have to try that tonight. I'm going to see how that control pause goes for me. I mean, I've it's, tried, I think you had a, a, a video on TikTok about that. And I think I tried it and it went for a while, but I don't know if I exhaled, exhaled right before I held my breath. So I think I just kind of went, you know, and yeah, then, you, you don't want your lungs full. You just want enough reserve in there to start regulating the CO2. I'm going to try that later and see how that goes. Hopefully Which I'll is, survive. But, but you will. And you know, it's up to your, it's your own pace. And that's, what's amazing yes. about it. It's willpower. It's, um, it's consistency. Yeah. You know, that's the hardest part about this whole airway journey is consistency. You know, it's one thing to, to read these books, right. And to learn this is right. This is wrong. This is right. This is wrong. This is maybe how you fix it. But for me to actually implement it and do it every day, that was hard. Like that's a lot of work. Power, yes, it's it's a lot. You know what? The best the best thing that that helps me on my journey so far is consistently digging for more information. Yeah, I think the more you learn about it, the more top of mind it is. Because it's not like somebody in my house is going to be like, "Hey, you're mouth breathing." No. They don't know it's bad. <laughs> the people around me have no clue that dysfunction actually ruins your health. Yes. And so it's not like I can, I can get my peers to, to pay attention to, Hey, did you sigh today? I don't know. Did you sigh today? Like <laughs> we're getting better, but it's still, it's really hard to have accountability from somebody else. It's gotta be you. And yeah. I think the only way to do that is because it's not common knowledge and it's not something they advertise on TV and, and there's not really a lot of stuff you can buy for this. No, it is not common knowledge. And again, it's like, you know, people get a little, and, and I get it still at the office and we talk a lot about it here and we still get that pushback a little bit about, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I think I'm breathing fine, you know? So it's really hard to break that first ice, um, you know, layer, layer, and that way we can kind of get into a conversation about everything else. Right. But, but, um, but then there's the other side that this also shows um, that a lot more people are becoming more aware, especially those that are in, you know, involved with airway, that their families have suffered from airway problems, that they are currently going through airway, um, you know, recoveries, if you will. Oh, and <clears throat> this book woke a lot of people up. James Breathe. Nestor, The New Science of a Lost Art. It woke a lot of the mainstream people up. And, oh. and, and it's, it's, it's sad. You know, that there's, there's a lot of people that, um, you know, they don't go to airway centric providers or airway focused providers. And, and, and it's not like, it's not like the medical community is withholding information. They just simply weren't taught in their curriculum that this is a problem. And it's for some reason, it just keeps getting lost. Exactly. Like you can look at like oral facial myofunctional therapy. Like they were talking about it in 1909. Hey, <laughs> floppy tongues are bad. Turns really? out crooked teeth, they're a symptom. 1909. Wow. But, but the orthodontic community at some point, they had their hand in it. They said, Hey, you know what, if, if we get, we're going to lose some opportunities to shape smiles. If, if everything fits, um, I, I hate, to, I, I don't want to say it's a conspiracy because I, I don't think that's what it is. No, it's I just think, you know, <laughs> if, if a certain group doesn't have a vested interest, if it's not going to benefit them in any, any way, and it's a compliance issue too. There's always going to be a place for orthodontist, even oh. if everybody was breastfed and chewed hard foods from, you know, their early development and was a nasal breather and had great tongue posture and played the didgeridoo and sang all day yeah. and moved their body. Yeah. There would still be a place for orthodontist because the thing that we're talking about is mostly compliance driven. That's very and true. You have to be compliant. Like this okay so this is an example of um this is the habit corrector from healthy oh, my start, favorite right? habit correctors yes yeah so myo munchie is same kind of concept i have to put this in my mouth and i have to chew <laughs> and i have to do it every day i've seen you do that i've seen you do that right? on your tiktok videos yes 
but if I don't do this, I'm never going to gain the muscle that it's going to take to grow the face. So there's no one, like I said, unless you're a kid, you get really lucky and your mom and dad took a deep dive and said, Hey kid, you're not supposed to snort. This is not normal for you to wake up all sweaty and, and I can barely wake you up in the morning. And the teacher says you can't pay attention. And, yeah. and like all the other, you know, ADHD like symptoms. Um, but you, you would have to be that parent that says, Hey, chew on this, literally put to this help. tape on your mouth, skip the cheese crackers. Let's go with some fruit, like yeah. understanding, like how the food affects the way you breathe. Think about this. If you overeat, mm -hmm. do you think it's easy to engage your diaphragm and get a nice deep breath? Yeah, probably not. No, it's not enough room. <laughs> no, not room. Yeah. yeah. And and in certain processed foods actually have uh, you know, they contribute to like excess CO2, like the the whole system, it's all connected. So when somebody says, I just want to tape my lips, you could totally just tape your lips. You will feel better. <laughs> but the minute you get to that place where if I feel this good, how much better could I feel? That's when you come to people like you and me and we say, hey. <laughs> let me get my hands on you i can give you a growth appliance i can create more room for your tongue i can uh i can help you you know if you if you're not cpap compliant i can get you something that's going to get you like over this hump yeah. like in the meantime i can i can help open your airway mechanically while you develop the muscles while you slow down the breath mm -hmm. while you fix the diet because here's another thing people don't think about most people who are recovering mouth breathers with really crappy sleep for decades on end mm -hmm. will tend to have poor gut health. Why, why, why would my gut health be bad? Because I mouth breathe Rhonda. <laughs> oh, <good question. laughs> so here's the deal. When you have crappy sleep, you depend on outside sources of energy because you are not recycling and creating your own. Right. So that looks like coffee in the morning with creamer. Uh huh. And it looks like sodas with sugar and it looks like carbohydrates you know, for energy, it looks like all of these processed refined sugars. And, and so your gut takes a huge hit because you're constantly looking for outside sources of energy. Yeah. You yeah. wake up tired every morning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, my husband used to drink a lot of coffee in the mornings and he started we're treating him with all the appliances and whatnot. And, you know, one day I woke up and I said, where's the coffee? And he said, Oh, I forgot to make it this morning. I'm like, Oh, interesting. So tell me, why exactly are you drinking coffee? Where are you drinking coffee for? You know, like really, what was the main driving reason for this? And he said, you know, it would just wake me up in the mornings. But lately I have noticed that things are actually settling and not, I don't feel the need to drink so much coffee, you know, in the mornings. And, and so he's working with the Vivo's appliances and we're helping him grow the arches and all that fun stuff. But it's been, um, yeah, he's noticed a big difference. Big, big difference with all of that. You know, I'm still working on the rest of the soft tissue stuff, right? The breathing yep. and the tongue and everything else, but you know, a little bit at a time, but he has definitely noticed the difference <clears throat> with the expansion, with the airway volume going through. And then, you know, and of course all day long, you know me, I'm keep your lips closed, <laughs> keep your lips closed. <laughs> tongue up, lips closed. Yeah, <laughs> I'm here as your buddy. This is yeah. not harassment. <laughs> I'm helping you. <laughs> and I'm not nagging, so knock it off. <laughs> right? I'm your buddy. And you know what's fascinating? Like, um, I, you know, even with the kids, you know, let's say they, you know, it goes in one ear and out the other, right? That mom keeps harassing them that their lips are open. That myotape, I, I don't have any with me right now. It's the one that goes around the lips. Like it's great for kids to wear during the day. It's oh, really? just enough tension to remind them to keep their lips closed while they're on their device or reading a book or they're watching TV. You know, I know everybody wants to limit screen time, but in the majority of households is that live in the households that live in the Western world, like me, um, you can't avoid them. them. So my, why does, you know, why not take advantage of it? <clears throat> yeah, absolutely. Um, and speaking of kids, um, what is what is uh, some of the tricks to get them to be more compliant with nose breathing um, appliance wear? Um, you know, of course, the mothers. You know, there was one mom. She's a PT, and um, and she told me she was doctored a lot. And oh my gosh, I feel like the worst nagging mom ever. <laughs> 
so now she's getting involved with all Bevo's and everything else as well because she does see the whole benefit of it, right? Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so you know about that. What what recommendations do you have for that <clears throat> age group? Like you know the little ones, and then you know because we do have two year olds and we have four year olds and we have obviously the older groups. Uh, compliance is is a problem. I, I've said this before. the The problem with airway disorders is the little ones are the most malleable, but they care the least because nothing hurts yet. Yeah. <laughs> they don't know what it feels like later on. Like they they're fine. Yeah. And, yeah. and the, the the problem with adults is we're all broken, but it's really hard to change our ways and change our patterns. Stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Very hard to change the old patterns. Oh, it's a double-edged sword. But with the kids, honestly, like creating awareness, you mm -hmm. know, with mine, I'm like, Hey, you know, I noticed your lips were open or, Hey, could we try and chew with our lips closed? It, just at the dinner table, it doesn't take much to plant the seed. You know, even if you just do a little bit every day, so it's not harassment, you know, let me sit across from my kid and I watch him take a bite of food. I'm like, Hey, did you notice that you opened your mouth a lot during chewing? I'm like, did yeah. you know that makes your tongue weaker? <laughs> yeah. And we want your tongue to be strong. So your teeth fit your face, right? So yeah. let's go ahead and maybe the next bite, we chew the whole thing until it's like a liquid. And then we swallow it with our lips closed. And then that'll be a great bite. And then yeah. the next bite, it just <laughs> starts <laughs> like, all over again. <laughs> but it's, it's planting the seed like now my nine-year-old is inundated with mouth breathing stuff, right? Like, and he, it's come to the point where I say lips, that's my call sign in the house. <laughs> um, it, I try not to do it out in public, but if, if I walk around the corner and I see their mouth open and I know their tongue is down, I'm like lips and they'll go. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so every time they hear me now, they're like, oh, she's going to say something. So there's like this knee jerk reaction and, yeah. and with them, it doesn't take much. Once you can reset them, they they'll they'll hold it for life. You know, I see so many people on TikTok that you know a speech language pathologist said my tongue was in the wrong place, and as a kid, I corrected it. My speech improved, and lo and behold, now my tongue stays suctioned to the roof of my mouth when I'm not using it. But it's it's challenging, and and my nine year old will come home and he'll say, you know, Bobby, Bobby was mouth breathing in school all day today. I was like, well, did you say anything to him? He's like. No, I'm like, good. Don't say anything. <laughs> I was like, because they're going to ostracize you if you're that kid who calls people out for mouth breathing. Oh, and, yeah. No, they don't want that reputation. <laughs> and he's done it. He's, you know, we had to go through that where, you know, he told somebody mouth breathing was bad for them. And then they said, <laughs> oh, you know, like, like, oh, second graders. <laughs> Oh, bless his heart for trying to stand up for the right thing to do, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and I think that's that's how these these movements work, right? I mean, it's just like screening for breast cancer. Like there was a whole generation of people who didn't touch their boobs looking for lumps. And then yeah. it became a thing. And and younger generations were saying, hey, you know, when you're in the shower, just do small circles around and see if there's any lumps or bumps or not. Right. And let's prevent, you know, and catch the breast cancer early. Um it's just one of those awareness things. <laughs> just a little bit at a time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm just tossing around a lot of um, ideas and I'm talking to, um, and I think she's online right now, um, Paula. She's a, she's a dear friend and she's actually, you know, wanting to jump in and help us to spread the word a little bit. And so- um, I, I'm sorry, if I don't interrupt you, I, I'll lose my thought. Here it is, okay? Ahead, Ready? I came up with the best idea for medical providers to collaborate, right? Because this is integrative. Yes, You know, like absolutely. not all people are going to go to the dentist and find out that the clenching and the grinding and the abfractions and the wear uh, and the scalp tongue and, and all of these things are because of their mouth breathing, but they may go for a physical once a year. Yeah. And what do you do when you're recording vitals? Oh, yeah. Right? Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Yeah. The perfect screening tool for any medical provider who is taking vitals or recording them is to note which hole that patient chooses to breathe through <laughs> when you instruct them to take the deep breath so you can listen to their lungs. That's a great idea. That's we, a great I mean, idea. we could solve so, so many, many problems we could catch it we're like hey you're in for afib or you know high blood pressure or diabetes type 2 i did notice that when i was checking the sound of your lungs you breathe through your mouth when yeah. i asked you to take a deep breath didn't you 
what, what is that normal? Like start the conversation. Hey, there are people whose job is literally to help train you not to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's, it's so true. And, and I've been, again, I've been trying to figure out, um, uh, you know, how to get, you know, um, more awareness, especially from the speech pathologist, from, um, you know, my, uh, you know, not monofunctional, but metaphysicians, pediatricians in general. Um, and it's just, yeah. So I, I, you know, we're gonna have to talk a little bit about that too um, at a later date, just so that we can somehow come up with a plan because that's something definitely that I'd like to kind of figure out a way of spreading the word a little faster. Maybe we can engage some other, um, doctors and I've been talking to Dr. Maraglia about it. Um, I don't know if you know Dr. Maraglia. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I already made connection with him and he's in, he just needs to just, you know, obviously we need to send us a date for him to engage. And I know that Paula is interested. So I've definitely, um, you know, give her a, a call and make sure that we connect with her to help us out and then find a way of getting this like <clears throat> totally, um, uh, you know, um, out in the open and see who, you know, and again, a little bit at a time, you know, honestly, it's just not going to happen all overnight. It's just a little bit at a time. You know, uh, Paula is the president for the Santa Clara Dental Hygiene Association. So, so she's, uh, absolutely loving the whole airway change and, and the whole, she's very passionate about it all too. So, I, um, honestly, like it. friends and family first, yes, you know, especially almost every airway focus provider I've ever come in contact with, they were also a recovering mouth breather. Oh my God. <laughs> and a lot of us end up in dentistry because of that. You know, we had rampant primary tooth decay. Um, we needed orthodontics, you know, like a lot of us ended up gravitating towards the dental field because of our time spent in as a patient. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and so you, you treat yourself, you treat your friends and family, and then you find the people who are receptive and you help them. And the minute they, they will turn and be your biggest advocate, they say, Hey, I know this doesn't sound like it has anything to do with us in this particular field of medicine, but I guarantee you <laughs> yeah. there's a component here of dysfunction. Yeah. And, and, and that's, I mean, I don't think I would have been this big of an advocate for airway health if I hadn't been a mouth breather because fixing myself was the most amazing thing and empowering thing that I've ever done. <laughs> and, and knowing like, this is, this is how you can do it. Like, I just, I have to, I have to tell people, I'm like, you know what, fix yourself, like become an advocate. And, and, and I, I, I'm not saying this is bad in a bad way, but it's almost like, um, going to a dermatologist who has cystic acne or going to like a hypnotherapist who smokes a pack of cigarettes a day, or going to like a nutritionist who's obese. Like, I, I want to go to somebody who's actually gone through what I'm going through and came out the other side. And I want to learn from them. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, you know, I've, like I said, I've, I've been watching your videos and following you and I really want to, um, you know, um, I've been, testing the, the whole breathing, breathe out, the breathe out pause and everything else so that, you know, we can slowly start implementing that because you're right. If I don't walk the talk, then I can't, you know, really show much about it, you know? So hi, Paula. Nice to see you. Hi, Marlene. Welcome. I can't see her. Um, anyhow, so, so yeah. Um, and then as far as um, myofunctional therapy, can we talk a little bit about um, how long have you had your patients in, in treatment? And then what happens when they graduate? And then what happens when, you know, after that, do you find them coming back to you regarding, um, you know, habit patterns re resurface, old habit patterns resurfacing? <clears throat> they absolutely could, but I, I, I don't know if you could tell, but I'm super passionate about this. So oh, yes. like I hammer home, like we got to get this right. You guys, like the whole point of making these muscles stronger that have atrophied over your life is so that you can have proper form and function and the new normal becomes the therapy, like not smiling, compensating with my lips, like the bite, smile and swallow. Mm -hmm. that engages the back of my tongue. And every time I swallow the right way, my tongue gets a little stronger. 
And every time it gets a little stronger, I breathe a little easier every night because I hold up my soft palate and my airway stays patent. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so uh, there have been patients that aren't very compliant. You know, I'll, I'll check back to them. Um, like, Hey, how's, how's tongue posture going? Oh yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I, I maybe pay attention sometimes. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like each time I see you, I'm going to ask you to show me your cave. That's where you suction your tongue to the roof of your mouth from the tip to the back. And I mm -hmm. want you to drop your mandible. Mm -hmm. I want to see how strong your tongue has gotten since I saw you last time. And so they'll do it. They'll be, I'm like, Oh, hmm. <laughs> I would think that if you were doing the exercises every day, your face wouldn't wiggle like that. Like you'd be able to hold it still as a statue. Um, and I would be able to see less of the bottom of your tongue when you suck it up. And so I'm like, just pretend I'm going to see you every day. <laughs> you know, I just, I'm going to show up in the grocery store and be like, Hey, let me see your cave. Like how strong is your tongue getting? <laughs> you yeah. know, just because it's not common knowledge because there's nobody in their house that says, Hey, you know, do your tongue workout. <laughs> Duh. Um, the, the, the compliance and accountability, it's really up to us, you yeah. know, and, and the trickiest part about all of this is like, you learn all this stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Then you start, start implementing it. And then you, maybe you don't see any results. And most of us are, there's a pill for the ill mm. and we're used to like instant gratification. And, um, you know, I don't see a change in a week, so I'm done throwing the towel in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> these, these are dysfunctions and and poor muscles, um, the tone wise that, that have lasted decades for the most part. And, and, and you won't see, you won't see a result overnight. And I mean, look at the bodybuilders. I mean, they don't go from flab to fab or whatever, like overnight, it takes months yes. and it's, it's interdisciplinary. Like it's, it's understanding the diet nutrition and how to lift weights and how to, you know, do all the, I'm, I don't, I don't work out. I mean, this one's pretty buff. <laughs> this one's better. Um, <laughs> that's because I use my left arm more than ever, you know? So when I was mouth breathing, um, I couldn't sleep on my back cause I would choke <laughs> yeah. like that for sure. Fire away to wake up and pee. but I was always sleeping on one side. I was only mm -hmm. sleeping on my left side. Mm -hmm. And so the left side of my face started getting atrophied as far as the muscles go. I was losing, um, tone and, and, and strength in my left arm. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's all connected. I did that eight hours a night. I slept on the same body part for eight hours every night. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> like of course it got weaker and one leg got shorter than the other. And, and like, you just, there's a reason they put the spine in the back. Yeah. They put the hard part for us to sleep on. Right. Right. <laughs> and when we're sleeping on one side or the other, there's always going to be asymmetry issues. Yeah. Yeah. And that makes sense. Dysbiosis. Yeah. Do you think that there's a, um, a correlation or there's any type of influence of the pillow? Have you ever tried changing the pillows and what kind of pillows and all that good stuff? I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Oh yeah. Pillows is a good one. It's a hard one, but it's a good subject. So I think we were supposed to sleep flat on the ground. I think so too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think somebody one day said, Hey, I wonder if we put some hay under here and maybe fill like this satchel with duck feathers. Ooh, let's yeah. do that. And, and so they're in Greece, right? And they're on the stone slab and they put some hay down and they, they fill a satchel with duck feathers. They lay on it and they're like, oh, this is kind of comfy. And then it starts evolving. <laughs> you know, every year they do something. Hey, here's an actual mattress. Oh my gosh. Well, here's an actual pillow. And then eventually what happens is, um, especially if you're mouth breathing and you have a floppy tongue, yeah. you're going to need to push your head up to breathe. Cause the minute you go backwards, everything gravity hits it. And you're like, Whoa. you can't breathe. <laughs> your jaw falls back. Your tongue falls back. All the tissues collapse in. Plus you're, you know, used to breathing through this hole. So your breath is really fast and hard. Uh, for me, it's a work away. So like when you first find out you're a mouth breather, you actually want to encourage side sleeping, right? Cause a lot of them, um, have obstructive sleep apnea by that point. Right. I and mean, a lot of us wait until we're already there. Right. And so you're like, Ooh, get off your back. You're, yeah. you're choking yourself every night. Get on your side, get on your side, whatever you do, like put one of those pillows in between your legs, put a body pillow behind you. Heck. So like a tennis ball in your shirt. So you don't roll on your back. Like there's yeah. tons of like, they even have like fanny packs for side sleepers. It's fascinating. Wow. But again, I think that there's so much 
of a missed opportunity with fascial work and circulation and and just balance of all of the muscles and the fluids <laughs> by sleeping on your spine. And so what will happen is as your tongue gets stronger and your breath gets slower, you'll be able to bring your head back down. Mm -hmm. So like now, I mean, it took years. It wasn't easy. And I had to experiment with myself a lot. You yeah. know, I went from two really firm pillows because that was the only way I could sleep without choking on my own body wow. parts, right? And then I went down to one pillow. And as my tongue got a little stronger, then I went to like a, an airline pillow. Hmm. And so I was just propping my neck up, opening my airway, like the CPR, you know, head tilt, yeah. chin lift. Yeah. And then as my tongue got stronger and my breath got slower, I cut that down until eventually it was just a sliver of that airline pillow. And then I said, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. So I put some um, props underneath my mattress uh -huh. and I haven't slept with a pillow in months. I just sleep straight on my back as much as possible with an inclined bed, but no pillow. The, the thing with the pillow is, I mean, you think about the cervical spine and alignment and it's just, it's a very delicate, fickle thing. And it doesn't, I mean, you guys probably know this. You have a really crappy night of sleep and you wake up, oh, I pulled my neck out last night. Yeah. <laughs> like, funny. no, you just slept on it wrong. Cause you're not supposed to be over there. You're supposed to be back here. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, um, yeah, I have a very thin pillow myself. So I've noticed that that's helped a lot. Yeah. And if we could all go flat again, I think we'd solve a lot of problems, but we can't go flat until we slow down the breath. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, I'm going to um, open it up to some questions. If anybody has any questions, I'm sure um, uh, there's, there's here and there and everywhere <laughs> little questions. <laughs> um, this was um, uh, uh, Rhonda Holman from Montana. She's our airway champion and she's all over TikTok and Instagram and everywhere. So ask away if you guys have any questions. Um, I'm sure she would love to share her knowledge with everybody. <laughs> Paula says, I've been keeping my lips closed the entire time. It is hard. <laughs> It's so hard. It's so hard. It's like beautiful. developing oral awareness. Wow. What is the first step? <laughs> first step was tape and just awareness. Honestly, like I had to become obsessed with my tongue. It took about 90 days. You know, they say 30 night, what 30 days to break a habit. That was wrong. Yeah, it me <laughs> Mine longer. took like a month and a half just to get my tongue to stay up. And, and the thing about the tongue is, um, it's an integral part. Like if we could all have strong tongues in the right spot, none of us would have a mouth breathing issue at all. <laughs> you know, like this wouldn't even be a thing, but our tongues are floppy and weak because we, you know, a had a pacifier B maybe didn't get breastfed C started on Gerber baby food, uh, D no one was around to tell us, Hey, your tongue is supposed to be suctioned up there, not laying down here or in between your teeth Yeah. and, and, and understanding like, you know, I want to keep it up there. And the, the really cool part about it, even let's say, let's say you weren't ready to dive into oral facial myofunctional therapy, right? It's there are exercises that are literally just for the head, face and neck and tongue. Like they're exercises mm -hmm, mm -hmm, to strengthen the muscles up here of the upper airway, right? Let's say you didn't do that. Did you know just putting the tongue in the right spot will make it stronger? So let's say you didn't want a deep dive or you have somebody who's really not interested in doing the exercises, just that little piece of hope. Hey, if you can reset that body posture, it's going to get stronger just by putting it in the right spot. Yeah. Um, okay. That's a great um, tip there. Thank you. Um, any tips for thumb suckers? Oh, that's okay. So myofunctional therapy. They we have a myofunctional therapist in the house. She's a um, hygienist too. So oh. she's in the house. Yeah. There's special programs, um, that go through a tongue, uh, like, a uh, uh, either like a pacifier, uh, weaning or a thumb weaning. And they all say, you know, thumb is harder because it's attached to their body. <laughs> so some of the programs I've seen where you actually use a sock. So you get the kid to pick out their own sock and you decorate it. You know, you like put a little face on it and say, Hey, this is my hand sock for when I go to bed at night. So instead of like putting really bad tasting stuff on their skin or making them feel bad about it. You say, Hey, let's go to bed with Saki tonight. 
And maybe Saki doesn't stay on for a month, but he goes to bed every night with Saki on because he made that sock puppet. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Sock Puppet. I am so glad I'm in bed. Let's go to sleep together. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and That's so, true. I mean, it's, it's all psychology at the end, but why, why are they sucking their thumb? Yeah. So we got to peel that back. Right. So we know there's, there's protocols that you can do that help you wean them off of the thumb, but why was their thumb in there in the first place? Right. Well, it's to posture the mandible forward and to stimulate the vagus nerve and the trigeminal nerve. So it's soothing having something up there. What if that something was your tongue instead of your thumb? <laughs> so good. And, yeah, and so why, good. why are you posturing your jaw forward? You know, are there adenoids and tonsils that are too big and he's having a really hard time breathing? Yep. Is, you know, is it the floppy tongue? You know, is it, is there a food allergy that's creating like all this excess inflammation well, back there that's making him really hard to like breathe comfortably while he sleeps? Why did the thumb end up there in the first place? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, that's, that's great. Yeah. That's, and that's and awesome. the appliances like this, the habit corrector, the mile one she, the, um, the, the guys, yeah, the Nemo's guys, all those guys are all great. They have they'll great help bring the jaw forward. They'll help get the tongue up so that you caught you, you basically cure the reason that thumb went in there in the first place. Right. Right. That makes sense. And if there's a tongue tie, yeah, you probably should yeah. release it. Yeah. You know, the all the people tie has say, to go through. my tongue can stick out of my mouth. I'm not tongue tied. I'm like, yeah, but can your tongue go up? Cause yep. that's where it needs to be. If it can't go up, but it can go out. It's not doing you any good. Right. And, and understanding like that kid who puts his thumb in his mouth. Hey, maybe it's, it's one of those other things, right? Maybe it's a poor diet. Maybe it's big adenoids. Maybe it's a, you know, a weak tongue. Maybe mm -hmm. the tongue can't actually get up there and it's never been able to get up there. So they've self-soothed with this, you know, digit of their yeah. body, Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, and kids, you know, they're seeing it in utero, right? Like the tongue ties aren't new. It's not no. as bad. We just used to snip them, but we don't now. No. And we used to be really aggressive with taking out tonsils and adenoids <laughs> where we didn't have these, you know, three infections a year regulations that some are going by. And it was, you know, I, oh man, if you guys looked at anybody, as far as ENTs, Dr. David McIntosh okay. is phenomenal. So he wrote the book snored to death. Okay. Brilliant airway focused ENT, but he works with pediatrics and he says, okay, so let's say you go to the MD, you're like your, your primary care physician. And you say, Hey, Billy's tonsils are touching. They're like kissing. Like when I look in his back of his mouth, it's all red and swollen. And like, I can't even see the hole. It's all tissue. Yeah. And they say, well, you know, he'll just grow out of it. <laughs> I had, you know, it's funny you said that because I had a patient consult so exactly like that. The mom's concern was that he was salivating all the time. Mm -hmm. And I look in there, I couldn't see the uvula. I just couldn't see anything. Nope. Everything was a wall. I'm like, yep. oh my gosh, this kid, you need to, you, seriously, you need to take him to the ENT. He goes, no, we did take him to the ENT. He said he'll grow out of it. I'm like, no. No, oh, there, it's brain damage happening and compensations that are going to last for the rest of his life. And, and, and what I really liked about Dr. McIntosh's analogy is, so let's say your kid is in the room next to you, right? Mm -hmm. And you walk in and there's a robber that came through the window and he's choking your child. Your child's turning blue in the face. He's sweating. He's moving around the bed. Like he cannot breathe. Do you wait to call the cops? <laughs> Maybe. Oh. <laughs> call the cops. No. <laughs> Call them now. <laughs> There's a bad guy choking your kid, just like those tonsils are every night. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. That's um, that's that's a great way of putting it. I'm gonna have to get his name too. I may just call him and see if I can get an interview with him too. I'd be loving to. Yeah, do that. he is yeah. brilliant. And, he is, and brilliant. he does a great. He's like, you know, you understand, like if if your 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 teeth grow in straight, right, and your yeah. your arch is broad, like a U and not a V. Think about this triangle as a nose. So every time my tongue isn't on my palate growing my face, I get this vault, right? That oh, high narrow palate, yeah. all that space you're taking from the nose that you would have had. And that's why those Vivos DNA appliances, growing the face, expanding the airway, giving more room for air up here. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it all, it's all connected. It's all connected. I like that. I like that triangle. Yeah. Like, He's like, so this it's is what nice we want. Visual. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you got. <laughs> yeah. That's nice. I like oh, that. and by the way, here's your deviated septum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. So anyhow, we're running a little over. So hopefully everybody's okay on time still. But um, anybody else have any more questions for our rock and awesome Rhonda? <laughs> <clears throat> going once going twice <laughs> it's 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 a lot to um there's a lot of information to absorb yes and um don't expect yourself to know all the answers overnight i still don't know all the answers no but i can tell you what you are the perfect lab rat you like even if you're like if you've got, you've, you grew, you had great straight teeth when you grew up or you, uh, you, you, you've never had to wake up to pee at night or snored or coughed and choked. Even, I mean, everybody can stand to improve their airway health. So be your own specimen, you know, try things that do work, that don't work, understand sleep hygiene. Cause that's a huge factor. You yeah. know, your skin has light receptors, you know, so if there's like an alarm clock, that's really bright in your room, it can mess up your sleep circadian rhythms. It, and, and understand at the end of the day, everybody's the human goal. Like if, if it's physically possible is <clears throat> four to five sleep cycles of light, deep and REM. Yeah. And each of them should last 90 seconds or, you know, the whole three cycles should be 90 second intervals, right? Mm -hmm. There's wearables. You can track your sleep with a watch, with the ring. There's things you can lay on. Uh, you can actually go and have like a home sleep test or go and get, uh, you know, an in lab sleep test, find out what your sleep quality actually is. So you have a baseline to go on a baseline. Yeah. Cause you know, when I was waking up three, four times a night and I was stuck in light sleep and I wasn't getting any deep sleep. And every time I hit rim, I would suffocate. Cause that's when all the muscles got floppy. Right. <laughs> and right. I, I mean, the sleep was horrible. The sleep architecture, just knowing that really helps you like cons, you know, like constantly say, okay, what can I not eat today that made my sleep? Like I did I have sugar too close to bed or, um, maybe that alcohol affected me more than I thought, or that cigar, or maybe I shouldn't argue with that person. Cause my anxiety was really high and I didn't go to bed on time. Yeah. Like understanding, like, you know, Hey, maybe a hot shower with humming before you go to bed, like an hour before bed will help your nose stay clear while you go to bed Yeah. and, and, and blue light. And and understanding like the circadian rhythms, like circadian getting that rhythm. Rising. Absolutely. Yeah, hey, absolutely. yeah. So when the sun rises and when it sets, like we're understanding the release of melatonin and cortisol and is the highest when you wake up. <laughs> and so there's all these little pieces of information, just absorb it, see what sticks, try it on yourself. Yes. And, and just share as much as you can. Absolutely. Just mouth breathing is bad for your health. Yeah. Can I see that book? <laughs> what, what do I have to do? To not mouth breathe. Oh, I've got them all. This oh one's airway is light. Is this light. one is gas. They're all backwards. Sorry, guys. Oh, no, it's okay. Airway is life and then gasp. Those gasp are solid. is a great, great one. This one is awesome. Um, treat the cause, treat the airway. 180 different medical conditions are linked to mouth breathing and over breathing. Wow. It's fascinating. It is fast. It is really fascinating. Um, I have another question here. Um, how long do you have patients wait after a tongue tie release to start their program full throttle? And <clears throat> my question to that would be also, um, how do you keep them motivated to come, you know, to, cause you know, you build this momentum, right. To get them to the, the, the tongue release and then they're in pain and then they're suffering and then they don't want to see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Photos. And how do you, how do you make it or how do you set it up to where after a uh, post-release, how do you um, get them to come back and be as engaged, if not more, because now there's a really, there, there's a real reason to keep it detached. Yeah, right? You don't want that scar tissue. And I've seen so many people, you know, have a, a great tongue dye, um, but they didn't do anything after like they had it released. Like they had this magical tongue tie revision, right. And they had this yeah. fact of released and they, they didn't engage it. So it was kind of like, you'd never had it in the first place. Like, so honestly, like after my functional tongue tie release, yes, it hurt. It hurt for like a week under my tongue. It was sore. 
And I didn't want to do the caves and I knew I had to, but that's because my therapist on the front end said, Hey, we are doing all of this so that after that you can do more of this. <laughs> it was never ending. It was never like we do this so you can have that. No, it was, we do this so that you can get that. And though we can do more of this yes. and photos, photos. I mean, people are really Unfortunately, we're ego driven, right? Yeah. Like I want people to praise me. I, I want to be told I'm doing something right. Yeah. And um, those photos don't lie. No, <laughs> no, a no. Video, like give me a 30 yeah. second video of you holding the cape. Let me see when I, you know, when I touch your jawbreaker, I want to see that your tongue doesn't quiver anymore. Like, cause I know you're doing the work at home. Yeah. I want to put a piece of food in your mouth and I want you to show it to me when you're done chewing it before you swallow it. I want to see if it's still chunky or if you're actually doing the work and it's all full on liquid. Cause I mean, at the end of the day, humans are basically meant to be liquid feeders. The first stage of digestion is mechanical digestion in the mouth. Yeah. And that's why like there's certain schools of thought that'll say, you know, if you're having one piece of steak, right. One, one, one fork full of steak, you want to chew it 32 times so that it is in the proper form to go down the next to the next line of digestion the next line of digestion right? yeah. yeah and there's so many people with weak tongues that eat really fast i was just like that yeah I, everybody's like oh Rhonda, you always eat so fast i'm like yes i didn't know now that it was because i had a weak tongue and it was too much work and i just wanted to get the stuff down but now i realize that every time i take the time to chew my food to a liquid i'm getting a myofunctional therapy workout like it's exactly no, Not only absolutely. am I making my gut happy, but I'm getting a workout like, Hey, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I have another question. Um, how do we determine where our tongue sits? Okay. So it should be on the incisive, like the tip of your tongue should rest on the incisive papilla. That's that little tiny. Some people have a really big bump. Some people have a little bump, but it's about three millimeters behind your two front teeth. Right here, a little, on the heart little tissue palate. right behind your front two uh -huh. teeth, behind them in the like tongue. a little bit. Yeah, you're it's inside. like a landing spot. Yeah, your body gave you a target. <laughs> you just got to get your tongue up there and stay up there. And then once you get that, then you suck the whole thing up. If you know, let's say I have like even for me, when my tongue was super floppy, I didn't know how to suck it up, and I couldn't because it, I didn't have the tone, but like I said, the more I focused on keeping it up there so that I would breathe through the right nose or the mm -hmm. right holes, um, the easier it was because my tongue got stronger. And, and, and if you don't know what the suction feels like, try doing the click sound. So my doctor calls it the sucking clock. <laughs> it's not very PC, but so now I know what the suction feels like, because in order to make that click sound or that cluck sound, when I pull my tongue down, that was suction before I did that. So I tell people all the time, like, feel free to spit all over your house. Okay. <laughs> Cause you need to like, tell your body, Hey, we want that feeling before the sound. And that's how, you know, if your tongue is in the proper resting position, you should have to pull it down to talk. You should have to pull it down to sing. You should have to pull it down to open your mouth to put food in. <clears throat> it should always live up there. <laughs> You know, the hardest part for me, I tell you right now is, is, is taking breaths. Like it, you know, breathing, just keeping mm -hmm. my lips closed, whatever. But if I'm talking or if I'm whatever I'm doing exercise, just that quick breath. That's the one that gets to me every single time. It's like, keep it's hard. <clears throat> it is so hard. And you know, human beings are, we're built with a, like every five minutes we have a physiological sigh. Like the human body works that way. Like we don't, we don't exactly know why it has something to do with the nervous system, but you innately will sigh about once every five minutes, whether you want to or not, <laughs> like it's some way of keeping all the systems in check. Yeah. Catching that one, you know, you're going to sigh anyways, you might as well extend the nasal exhale and get it out the right holes. Mm -hmm. So even yeah. if that's all you start with is being paranoid about where your tongue is, pretend somebody's watching you and seeing if your lips are open while you're reading this paper. And then, uh, you know, just this pretend there's somebody watching you. That's honestly the best and most simplest way of doing this because you are resetting neuroplasticity. Like these are pathways that are ingrained and someone, it was really, sorry, we're over time, but like, so if you did go sledding, right? So the first time you took the sled down the hill, there's not a track, but yeah. every time you walk back up 
and you get on your sled and you jump back down, each time you make a deeper track. And that's what resetting this whole breathing thing is, is making the track deeper and deeper and deeper. That's so a great way of putting it. Back on yeah. pilot and breathe through the easier <laughs> hole. That's like, a yeah, great just way because it's it, easier yeah. doesn't mean it's, it's good for you. No, yeah. No, that's a great way of putting it for sure. Awesome. Very nice. Nice questions. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? <laughs> Going once. <laughs> I could talk all night, you guys. I apologize. Yeah, I, so can I. <laughs> I, I've, I it's, it's, um, and once you start feeling better and you get better sleep and your brain starts working better, it's, all you can think of is I want to learn more. Yeah. Like how did a little piece of tape change my life? Like, and, and for me, I didn't even have that many comorbidities. Like I had neck pain and I would have to go to physiotherapy. I had uh, migraines. So I had to go to a neurologist. Um, but honestly, like I, I didn't have a lot of the major diseases that a lot of my mouth breathers get, um, you know, and they're getting it younger and younger. Cause we're, we're definitely not catching it because the foods get softer and nobody's paying attention to the way we breathe. And so I figured, gosh, if that little bit of tape could make that much of a difference in somebody who's not technically that sick, wow, what could this information do for somebody who is that sick? Uh, somebody came in from TikTok. She was asking if um, she joined a little late, but if she wanted the recording. So yes, um, Veronique, Veronique, she's going to be, um, we're going to have the recording for you um, in about a week or so. My um, my assistant, Danny, was supposed to be here today. He's uh, he's he's here. He's not here, but he's not physically here, but he's here. And um, <clears throat> he's been helping me remotely. And so I've been trying to keep tabs on everything. So um uh, so yes, it will be available in about a week's time or so. So keep checking in and sending us an email if, if you haven't seen it yet around, we'll be posting it probably on our YouTube uh, channel so that everybody, and that's where all of these recordings go. They go to their YouTube channel so that people can access them. How, how does this help someone with fibromyalgia or reduce symptoms? Okay, so it all comes down to non-restorative, non non-reparative sleep. <clears throat> If you're struggling to breathe all night and you're stuck in fight or flight, you're going to have chronic inflammation and fibromyalgia and breathing disorders are closely linked um, just because your body doesn't have the ability to repair itself like it used to. Like it's just trying to keep you alive so you don't choke on your own tongue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so just understanding, you know, there's so many things that we're now getting enough science to link it all to. It's fascinating, like just knowing that every year we're going to get a little bit more research. Like this book alone, like if that's all you did was read, you know, treat the cause, treat the airway, you'll see in like page, oh, which one is it? Fibromyalgia is in here. It's it's one of the comor 180 of them, right? So we got. I'm going to buy that book. Link. It's all linked to shitty sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's airway. And your body is struggling to breathe. Yeah. <clears throat> the body doesn't have any oxygen. Everything is just going to yeah. fall apart on us if we don't have any oxygen. You know, it's we can like go without a car water. without changing the oil. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we can go without water for you know maybe a few days. We can go without food for a few days, but we just can't go without oxygen for more than what a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's so it's um, fascinating. Just um, it's all. Uh, it all boils all down connected. to, uh, to uh, oxygen. It all just all boils down to oxygen. So you know, Rhonda, one of the things that um, you know, um, we have a nice little group here, and I'm really, really wanting to do a, a, a stronger event about all this. And you know, maybe sometime we can just kind of all meet. I know Madeleine is very interested in all of this. She's uh, she's starting to work with us a little bit on the myofunctional therapy. You know, we've we've shown her a few things we've been working on. So. So I'm really excited to bring her along and, and, and all oh. that. Danny's been sick, Madeline, this week. That's why I've been a little slow on everything this week. So I apologize Sorry, for my delayed responses. Um, Look, this is a myofunctional therapy workbook, right? Like this is what they give you when you go through the training, okay? <laughs> this is an entire book of like a gazillion different exercises that all get you to the same goal. Slow and silent nasal breathing at rest. Tongue up, lips closed, breathing through your nose. So you can make it as entertaining or as simple as you want. 
you just got to do it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we're we're, we're going to be gotta starting pretty soon. So I'll be reaching out to Marlene here pretty soon, hopefully by the end of this week to try to get her in sometime in the next few days and, and or week or so and try to tighten up everything else so that we can yeah. start with Does, the patients. And uh, some and kids want, there. they want a lot of different exercises to keep them engaged. But from my experience, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. So anytime you're going to be working with the muscles of the head, neck and face, you want to make it doable so that they can create that pattern of like repetition. This is what I do every morning. This is what I do every night. And if they can't be compliant, that's when you go to one of these books and you say, okay, let me just play roulette. Let's do this. Uh, let's go to <laughs> this exercise, <laughs> you know, and then make it interesting or let them pick, you know, give them a choice of three. Like, which one do you want to do today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Um, Veronique wrote, um, <clears throat> I think she's one of your followers on TikTok. So she wrote, um, you know, I told her the, 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 the video is going to be on YouTube eventually. So she said, thank you. Uh, my husband, only 29, thin and active, has a, has sleep apnea and chronic heartburn. Yeah. He started using a tape, but we're really interested in learning more. So I don't know where you live, Veronique, um, but um, you know you can go to what American Academy of Oral my, my, uh, Malfunctional Therapists and start there um, for sure, and look for a, a a malfunctional therapist maybe in your area. You can also go to some websites. You can go to the Vivo's website or you can go to the ALF uh, website and there you may find some um, dentists that will and are trained and are willing to work with you. And some of them have um, a functional therapist. You have ENTs also that you can yep. go see. Um, I know that um, Rhonda works at an office that does ALF therapy. I don't know if they do any other treatment but I think they started with ALF, right? Um, yep. And then she's been trained there and then she's taken off on her own to do and, and then there and beyond, if you will. Um, but I know that she they do that there and they're in Montana. So I'm not quite sure where whereabouts you are, but, um, you know, hopefully that advice helps. I don't know if Rhonda has any other um, advice for you, but that's kind of where I would start. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, the, the way you triage this is typically typically lip tape first. So let's change the pathway. And then simultaneously work with Buteco breathing exercises and oral facial myofunctional therapy. So you're doing both of them at the same time. You're slowing down the breath and you're getting your tongue stronger. And then once you've got that baseline established, then you say, okay, so I've got function back on track. How do I make more room for my tongue? And that's when that airway focus provider comes in and says, hey, we can actually help you grow your face. So your tongue fits the way it was supposed to. Or that's where the ENT that comes in and said, hey, you've done everything else. Clearly there's that deviated septum is like preventing you from getting like patent nasal airways. Like yeah. now it's time. But I always say, start with function first, go to form and then hit structure. I think that's the best way to do it because there's so many people that pass those first two steps by. You'll create the discipline once you start hitting the-, the function Oh first. yeah, you appreciate oh, it way more. You won't, yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you go straight to structure and you bypass function, a lot of people still aren't getting restorative reparative sleep, even though their tongue fits. So mm -hmm. I, I highly recommend tape breath muscles first yeah, and then sure. go into space. <clears throat> and she's in Austin, Texas. So where's your ENT, um, the, the ENT you're mentioning? Dr. McIntosh, he's in Australia. Oh goodness. Okay. <laughs> Um, uh, you know, you got Dr. Zoggy in California. Yes, if you're yes. you got Dr. Zoggy, you got Dr. Zoggy. Uh, and California. there's so many, uh, you know, with the Breathe Institute training. <clears throat> in Texas, we have Dr. Scott. She's a big Vivos. Um, and then she does a program called Myo, I forget the name of the program, but she does another Myo treatment with Dr. Liao, who's another big provider mm -hmm. of yeah. airway therapy. So I don't know how far she is from you, Veronique, but that's one um, one place to start. Um, so, um, and then there's a, there's a, actually a lot of doctors in 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 Texas that that do this. So I know. Yeah, and there's so many search engines like uh, AOMT, I Hale in Houston, yeah, Airway Circle, um, Airway Health Solutions. 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many search engines now where, and you'll see the same providers are kind of like signing up for all of them. Cause they're Absolutely. like, Absolutely. this is yeah. a very small group of people that are actually focusing on this epidemic. Yep. And so they're, they're doing a really good job connecting. Cause like on the zoom webinar, like I'm talking to Dr. Galan who like gets it. Like we gravitate towards other people. I'm like, Oh my God, it's, this is this. <laughs> yeah. We've been looking right past it. And yeah. this was it the whole time. And this, started the road to shitty sleep and poor yeah. health. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So anyhow, so it is now the cream of the crop. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Hale and Houston and the cream of the crop. Yeah, it is. It's just, we're just, we're all over the place and we're really trying our best to, to get awareness out. Cause that's all it starts. That's where it starts. It's just awareness. Yep. People need to hear it from different ways. And mm -hmm. then eventually we'll be like, Oh, you know what? I think I heard that. Yeah. You know, I heard it again. Yep. Wow. Okay, get it. <clears throat> Just a teeny bit. Yeah. So um, that's right. <laughs> Hello, associates. All right, everybody. Well, gosh, thank you very much. Um, I don't know if anybody else has any other questions, but I think we've covered a lot and very excited to see everybody. Thank you, Marlene, for joining at the last minute. I love how quickly you pivot. That's amazing. Love it. Um, <clears throat> And then um, Rhonda, thank you very much again. Um, this is not going to be the first, only first time. It's going to be uh, one of many. So be ready. Okay. <laughs> so um, we'll bring you on again, and um, and then um, try to make uh, uh, try to connect with some other people too. Like I say, so stay stay tuned. We'll, we're trying our best to bring. We have Doctor. Um, I forget his last name. We have the Ra, the the maker of the Raz. Um, tablets um and um he's going to be coming on the next time so i need to connect with him make sure the dates are still okay sometime in november um paula snyder writes amazing class thank you Rhonda. thank you dr galan thank you paula for always your support and help i know that you love listening to all this stuff and she's been such a amazing supporter of all of it so so yeah so anyhow so Thank you very much, everybody. I know we can go on all night here trying to, <laughs> you know, gang up ourselves to help. Yeah, <laughs> take everybody's <laughs> lip and let's do this. So we'll be in touch. Thank, Thank you, very you so much, much for having me. Now. We'll, be, we'll, we'll see you soon, too. Bye, guys. <laughs> see you on TikTok. Yes. <laughs> Bye.